The story begins with a dark, mysterious pond. From within its depths, someone was struggling to escape. With great determination and effort, she finally managed to break free from the water's grasp. And that someone is our protagonist, Salvos. As she emerged onto the solid ground, she began to walk, wondering where she was and who she was. Just as she was trying to make sense of everything, a window popped up in front of her. It showed information about herself. Her name was Salvos, and she was a level one infant demon larva with the special ability to understand any language. She had five points in vitality, strength, endurance, wisdom, and agility. At first, Salvos was confused, but then she realized that the window was showing her own information and she got even more confused. Then she looked around, hoping to find someone nearby, but there was no sign of any living creature for Mile. All she could see was the vast, empty white land. Then, she started to crawl across the chalky and rocky floor, sliding between huge rocks for hours. Suddenly, something sharp poked her, causing pain, and she quickly moved away, unaware of what had poked her. Out of curiosity, she stared at the spiky rock and realized it was a hard, white object with spikes on it and a flat side. She then recognized it as a rock. As she looked around, she noticed several other rocks in the area. She wondered if they were all just ordinary rocks or if there was something different about them. As she continuously stared at the rocks, another window popped up, surprising her once more. It informed her that her identification level had leveled up to level 2 and she had been awarded experience points for leveling up a general skill. Feeling clueless at first, an idea suddenly came to her mind. She thought that if she could identify objects with this skill, could she use it on the rock? This thought got her very excited. Without wasting any time, she used the skill on the rocks, and the skill indicated that they were indeed just regular rocks with no other special information about them. Feeling disappointed that all the rocks turned out to be regular rocks despite their different sizes, spiky spikes, and colors, she attempted the identification skill multiple times on all the other rocks nearby, hoping for different results. Unfortunately, she was met with the same outcome each time. This made her on the verge of tears, but just as she was about to cry, another system notification appeared, shocking her once again. Curiously, she watched the system window, wondering what new skill she had acquired this time. As she moved forward while keeping an eye on the system window, she learned that she had reached level 2. She now had 5 stat points and 1 skill point. She wondered what she could do with these new abilities. Suddenly, she heard some noise and turned to her right. To her amazement, she saw something incredibly interesting. Other living beings. It was the first time she had encountered beings like herself. Dozens of them were grouped together, aimlessly wandering through the empty landscape. They stood out against the white background with their vibrant colors, creating a stark contrast to the blandness of the surroundings. Most of them resembled her, but with slight variations in their forms. One had black and yellow spots on its back, while the rest of its body was red. Another had only a single eye on its face, unlike her two eyes. This made Salvos question if she was also like those rocks. Even though they were different in shape and color, they were still the same. Curious, she used her identification skill once again, and she discovered two things. First, all of them were at level one. Second, Despite belonging to the same species and subspecies, she herself was at level 2, which was higher than theirs, which was different from the rocks, where all the results were the same. This realization brought a sense of calmness to her mind. As Salvos was about to leave the group of infant demons, something caught her attention. She noticed another level 2 infant demon just like herself. She was shocked when the other demon raised her tentacles close to her face, and a small flame appeared from them. Salvos was bewildered and desperately wanted to learn how to do that. Using her identification skill, she discovered that the skill was called Magical Fire. It explained that the fire was created using mana and could be mastered through wisdom. Salvos checked her personal information and understood the system's intended meaning. Since she had five available stat points, she decided to allocate one point to her wisdom, increasing it to six points. As she did so, a spiderweb-like structure appeared above her, leaving her curious about its purpose. She closed her eyes and opened them again, but the structure suddenly disappeared. She felt devastated, wondering where it had gone. Eventually, she concluded that it might be related to her mana, but she couldn't produce any fire from her tentacles. She was disappointed. However, she didn't give up. Instead, she decided to follow the infant demon who could use magical fire, hoping to learn from her. Before we proceed further into the video, it took a lot of time 
time and effort to make this video, so if you haven't liked this video and subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you all for supporting this channel. Now let's continue with the video. After hours of traveling, all the larvae that had been walking ahead suddenly came to a stop. For some reason, the larvae in front of Salvos were not moving forward, blocking her view. Determined, she maneuvered around them, trying to find a higher vantage point to see what they were investigating. However, what she witnessed was not something good. As she reached the front, she saw a tall level 5 infant larva, which made her feel scared. Then, the level 2 infant demon who could use magic fire stepped forward, scared but determined to fight. She activated her magical fire skill instantly. Salvos became excited, thinking that now she would save everyone like a hero and that her magical fire skill would be powerful. But before she could finish her sentence, the level 5 larva slammed his head into the level 2 larva, shattering her into pieces. Salvos was stunned and speechless. Every larva stood in a line, filled with anger, and started attacking the large level 5 larva. However, the result was the same. He killed them with a single blow. The level 5 larva proved to be incredibly fierce and easily overpowered them, causing their blood to splatter helplessly. Observing this, Salvos became afraid and realized that she had no chance of winning against him alone. She believed that they might have a fighting chance if they worked together. Salvos remained remembered the larva with a single eye and started searching for him. However, he and many others had already escaped, leaving their comrades behind. The level 5 larva continued to rampage mercilessly, executing the smaller ones. His rampage was so fierce that he leveled up to level 6 and grew even bigger. Fear spread through the air, and even Salvo started to lose hope. She realized that running was the only option to survive, so she and the remaining larvae started running. However, the level 5 larva was faster than them. In an instant, it caught up to them, slamming its head and crushing many infant larvas instantly. Salvos was thrown to the ground, feeling helpless. She thought hard about how to defeat the powerful larva. That's when she noticed the blue path emerging again, creating the web-like structure. She tried to open the system window to understand its meaning, but her focus was interrupted when another larva was thrown at her, causing her to fall to the ground. Despite the pain, she realized that the web-like structure had something to do with wisdom. She used all her stat points to increase her wisdom to 10, and suddenly she could see the web-like structure more clearly. With great concentration, Salvos focused on creating fire. Suddenly, the blurry web-like structure became engulfed in flames. She dashed towards the level 5 larva, covered in fire like a meteor, and made a huge hole in its chest instantly killing it. Meanwhile, a red larva watched in awe, having narrowly escaped death just moments before. As she fell to the ground, she felt a surge of satisfaction. She had finally mastered magical fire. Not only that, but she also leveled up three times, gaining two new skills. Her current level was now five, and she had skill points and stat points to allocate. Additionally, she obtained the Fire Strike skill. Salvos was amazed by her incredible achievement, unable to find words to express her progress. However, her thoughts were interrupted when she noticed a red larva staring at her. Fear trembled through her as she worried that this larva might harm her. Summoning her courage, she asked, What do you want? Salvos kept her focus on the red larva, waiting anxiously for a response. The red larva continued to gaze back at her without showing any emotions. Suddenly, its eyes sparkled as it observed Salvos. Curious, Salvos moved her head, and she realized that the red larva's eyes followed her every movement. Why aren't you doing anything? Are you just a rock? Salvos asked once again, growing frustrated at the lack of a reply. With no answer from the red larva, she decided to walk away. After her victory over the large demon, her main goal was to become stronger and reach higher level. She wandered across the land for days. Along her journey, she encountered wild infant demons who attacked her without any reason. Reason. She made a rule that she would defend herself and defeat anyone who attacked her first. Salvos didn't particularly mind that other demons kept attacking her because defeating them only made her stronger. However, there was one small problem. She was being followed. Just as she was about to engage in a battle with a wild demon, the red larva suddenly appeared and snatched the target away from her. At first, Salvos didn't mind since this larva was in the company of others who weren't wild, and it didn't seem like he intended to harm her. So she allowed the red larva to accompany her on her journey. However, every time Salvos got into a fight, the red larva would jump in and steal her kills. 
Even if he didn't finish them off completely, Salvos would get less experience because of his involvement. This made Salvos increasingly annoyed as she checked her system and saw her gains shrinking. She believed in her own fighting abilities and didn't feel the need for anyone's help, so she tried to keep her distance from the red larva. When it came to distributing her stat points, Salvos focused on raising her agility and wisdom. But unfortunately, she noticed that the red larva was also increasing his agility. No matter where she went, the red larva kept following her, making Salvos exhausted from his constant presence. Even though she wanted to be left alone, she found herself concentrating more on her agility to avoid being with him. However, deep down, she knew that wisdom would be more helpful in battles. Sometimes, she managed to temporarily lose him, only for him to somehow find her again. This made her feel even more frustrated. At one point, she thought about getting rid of the red larva by hurting him, but she quickly realized that such actions would make her no different from the large demon she defeated. The mere thought of becoming a wild demon scared her, and she desperately didn't want to turn into one. So, instead of harming him, Salvos decided to find ways to avoid him altogether. Suddenly, Salvos and the red larva came across five other larvae, with a larger black one standing before them. Salvos wasn't sure if these larvae were wild or tame. Since they didn't attack her, she assumed they were probably tamed and decided to approach them. When she checked their levels, she saw that the black larva was at level 9, while the others were at level 6 or below. Salvos herself had reached level 8 by now. Surprisingly, the level 9 larva pointed directly at Salvos, leaving her completely clueless about his intentions. Salvos thought that maybe he wanted someone to join his team and offered the red larva to him, thinking it would be a way to get rid of the red larva. But the black larva shook his head in disappointment, indicating that he didn't want the red larva. Poor red larva. Nobody wanted him. Once again, the black larva pointed at Salvos, indicating that he only wanted her. However, Salvos still couldn't understand what the black larva was trying to communicate. Suddenly, without warning, the black larva launched an attack, trying to stab Salvos and causing blood to splatter. She was confused, unsure if the attack was intentional or accidental. But before she could react, the black larva prepared another attack, about to hit her. In that moment, the red larva appeared and attacked the black larva, landing punches on his face. Seeing this, Salvos realized that the red larva had come to her aid and that the black larva wanted to hurt her. Although she wanted to help, fear overwhelmed her, paralyzing her body. The red larva fought valiantly on his own, battling the black larva with equal strength. However, the encounter took an unexpected turn when a green, one-eyed larva intervened. He cast a skill and a rock formed, which struck the red larva larva on the head, causing him to panic. The red larva looked at the other four larvae, realizing they were the source of the attack. These three larvae immediately started attacking him together, leaving the black larva and Salvos alone. Salvos felt fear gripping her as she watched the events unfold. She looked at the black larva and finally understood that these larvae were not mindless like the wild demons. However, she also realized that they didn't see her as a friend, but as something they could kill to level up and become stronger. While they continued their relentless fighting, Salvos turned her attention to the level 9 larva. It was clear that this larva wanted to defeat Salvos all by himself and gain the experience. The black larva prepared to attack her with his sharp pincers, but she dodged the attack and quickly used her magical fire skill, delivering a solid punch to his stomach that caused him pain. She realized that she was faster than her opponent. Then, Salvos noticed the one-eyed larva getting ready to use his magic rock attack. Since Salvos had put most of her points into agility, she easily avoided the attack. This made Salvos annoyed with the one-eyed larva, and she considered attacking him first. However, the black larva charged at her, reminding her that she needed to deal with him first before going after the one-eyed larva. The one-eyed larva prepared to attack Salvos again, while the black larva challenged her to fight him. Upon witnessing all of this, Salvos felt a surge of anger. The one-eyed larva prepared its magic attack, while Salvos activated her fire conjuration skill. The intensity of her flames made the black larva feel threatened, and as she prepared her attack, the black larva covered its face in a defensive manner. 
However, to his surprise, her attack was just a distraction. She threw her flame beside the Blackhorn larva and dashed toward the One-Eyed larva. In response, the One-Eyed larva unleashed its magic rock attack, but Salvos effortlessly dodged it and retaliated with a devastating punch of magical fire, instantly defeating and killing the One-Eyed larva. After catching her breath, Salvos looked at the flames and thought about the Red Larva. He was stronger than the others, but was starting to get outnumbered. Suddenly, an idea popped into her mind. But before she could do anything, the black larva lunged at her with his fangs. She quickly jumped upward, avoiding his attack. In an instant, she dashed toward the other larvas, crashing into them and sending them flying backward. Then the remaining four larvas tried to attack her all at once. But just as they were about to strike, the black larva intervened and killed one of the larvas who was trying to harm Salvo. Now Salvos was certain that the black larva wanted to kill her for himself so that he could level up on his own. Then, a devastating fight began between Salvos and the Black Larva. Salvos activated her fire conjuring skill and both of them exchanged powerful blows. The battle went on for hours. Salvos was tired and hurt. She could barely muster enough energy for another fire strike. But unlike the Black Larva, she had a friend. Suddenly, the Red Larva punched the Black Larva in the face, sending him rolling on the ground. The Black Larva was selfish, so he had killed his own companion to gain all the experience points for himself. The remaining Larva was defeated by the Red Larva. Now, it was a two versus one situation. Salvos and the Red Larva charged up their attacks and simultaneously delivered a heavy blow to the Black Larva, causing him to fly upwards and slam to the ground, getting killed. Breathing heavily, Salvos and the Red Larva both collapsed on the ground, exhausted from the battle. Then, a system window popped up, letting Salvos know that she had learned a new skill called Rest. She had also leveled up twice and was now at level 9. Looking at the window, she realized that she was close to reaching level 10. She had a feeling that something important would happen when she reached that level, but she wasn't sure what exactly. As a gentle breeze blew by, Salvos and the Red Larva peacefully rested after their intense fight. Salvos was grateful for her new skill, which helped her recover quickly from battles with the horned demons and their minions. She would have preferred to avoid the fight altogether, but it had helped her level up. She noticed changes in her abilities and stats, especially her skills, which had improved. Now, at level 9, she had grown larger and even developed new limbs that she didn't have at level 1. She might have become as big as the large demon that first attacked her when she met the others. Salvos was certain that she would continue to evolve and change as she leveled up. She believed that something important awaited her when she reached level 10. She also felt grateful to the Red Larva because he had saved her life. If he hadn't intervened when the Black horn demon attacked, she would have been dead. Because of this, she no longer minded that he was following her. Suddenly, the red larva winked at her teasingly. It seemed like he was joking around and having fun. They continued their journey together with the red larva faithfully following Salvos. She was grateful for his help and had accepted him as her companion. They fought side by side, defeating many other demons and leveling up together. Then the scene shifts and we see terrifying-looking demon standing on his balcony, overlooking a world filled with darkness. The demon turned away from the unsettling view and made his way back to his grand throne. As he walked, every other demon in the land bowed their heads in submission. With a commanding voice, he declared that the time had come to deal with the foolish ones who dared to enter his his domain. He warned them that only destruction and chaos awaited those who dared to challenge him. The demons listened intently, knowing their king's words were to be heeded. Once seated on his imposing throne, the demon king revealed his terrifying appearance. He possessed long, sharp nails, pointy horns atop his head, and a strong, masculine form. His eyes glowed a menacing red as he issued orders for the survivors to be found and brought before him. He promised rewards for those who faithfully carried out his will. Hearing their king's command, thousands of demons rushed outside, causing the very ground to tremble beneath their powerful strides. Their mission was to locate and capture any survivors who had dared to enter their land. Then the scene shifts and we see they were walking near a cliff. They suddenly heard an unfamiliar noise coming from below. Curiosity got the better of them and they peeked over the edge of the cliff. What they saw was unexpected and terrifying. A group of angry and fierce demons was marching forward with oppressed-looking larvas following behind them. Salvos had never seen anything like it before. For the first time, they heard a deep voice coming from a demon with large horns, sharp teeth, and bright red eyes. 
The demon warned everyone to keep moving and threatened a terrible death for anyone who disobeyed. Salvos and the red larva watched intently, trying to understand what was happening. Then the red larva caught sight of something and drew Salvos's attention to it. It was the one-eyed larva accompanied by captive larvas who were being forced to follow. Salvos immediately recognized the one-eyed larva as the larva who had escaped during their fight with the tall demon larva. Suddenly, some of the lesser demons in the group rebelled, but the higher demon with the large horns swiftly killed them all with one blow. Amidst the chaos, the one-eyed larva tried to make a desperate escape, but a spear of flames was launched, hitting him in the stomach and instantly killing him. The higher demon declared that he had warned them about trying to escape, and he used the one-eyed larva's fate as a lesson for the remaining survivors. He cruelly ordered them to move forward, making it clear that they could never run from him. Salvos and the red larva carefully moved along, keeping a safe distance from the wild demons below. The horrifying scene of the demons effortlessly executing the larvas filled them with deep unease. Suddenly, one of the demons glanced upward, but Salvos and the red larva managed to hide themselves, trembling with fear. As the higher demons moved farther away, Salvos and the red larva took a moment to calm themselves. They looked back at the cliff and noticed something burning with magical flames. It looked like a strange object, resembling a spear. Salvos recognized it as a magical item and quickly slid down towards it. The red larva followed her, feeling anxious. Salvos approached the spear and used her identification skill to learn more about it. However, initially nothing came up, leaving her confused about its origins and purpose. She tried again, focusing deeply on the spear. Suddenly, a system notification appeared, indicating that her identification skill had leveled up from three to four. She was awarded experience for leveling up her general skill. The system informed Salvos that the spear was a medium-grade weapon. It was made of magical flames and allowed the wielder to inflict additional fire damage on their enemies. This revelation sparked an idea in Salvos's mind. She realized that she could combine this weapon with her fire strike skill to enhance her attacks and make them even more powerful. As Salvos was about to grab the spear, a loud roar echoed behind them. They turned around and saw a fierce beast approaching slowly. The system noticed them that it was a level 15 hellhound. Fear gripped Salvos and the red larva as they trembled in the presence of the mighty hellhound. Its sharp teeth were exposed as it charged towards them. The numerical difference between them seemed overwhelming, and Salvos had no idea how to face such a formidable opponent. To her, it looked like a highly evolved demon. The hellhound roared ferociously, closing in on Salvos and the red larva with lightning speed. Just as it was about to strike, Salvos swiftly dodged its attack. She she activated her fire conjuring skill and landed a strong blow to the hellhound's stomach. However, her strike didn't even leave a scratch on the beast. Undeterred, the hellhound let out another thunderous roar and raised its sharp claws, attempting to claw at Salvos. Somehow she managed to avoid its attack, providing an opening for the red larva to launch a counterattack, inflicting a small amount of damage on the hellhound. Now the hellhound turned its attention to the red larva, focusing its aggression on the smaller creature. Taking advantage of the destruction, Action, Salvos unleashed a barrage of magical fire at the Hellhound. With the Hellhound caught off guard, Salvos and the Red Larva attacked simultaneously, leaving the beast unsure of its intended target. However, before they could act, the Hellhound struck Salvos, sending her crashing into a corner. Then, it unleashed a vicious scratch upon the Red Larva. Salvos realized that her companion couldn't match the overwhelming strength of the Hellhound. Looking around, she spotted the spear and an idea formed in her mind. Despite the the scorching heat, Salvo summoned all her strength to pull out the spear. She closed her eyes, enduring the burning sensation and the spear's resistance. Finally, she succeeded in dislodging the spear. Glancing at her wounded companion under the relentless assault of the Hellhound, Salvos felt frustration surge within her. She commanded the Hellhound to stop its attack on her companion and unleashed her fire strike to drive the beast away. As Salvos and the Hellhound locked eyes, tension filled the air. Salvos tightly gripped the spear engulfed in flames, ready to defend herself. The Hellhound crouched low, preparing to pounce and attack. In the middle, the red larva lay wounded and helpless. With a mighty roar, the hellhound leaped towards Salvos. 
Acting swiftly, she summoned her fire strike skill to counter the attack. Despite getting scratched on her stomach, Salvo stood her ground and defended herself. As the Hellhound readied itself for another strike, it charged towards Salvos with a thunderous roar, mouth wide open. Seizing the opportunity, Salvo struck the Hellhound in the mouth with the spear. Combining the spear's power with her fire strike, she delivered a devastating blow that instantly killed the Hellhound. The Hellhound collapsed to the ground, defeated by Salvos' relentless assault. A congratulatory system window appeared, praising her victory over the formidable foe. Salvos leveled up twice, reaching level 11. She felt a surge of satisfaction at her triumph. However, the elation was quickly replaced by intense pain and exhaustion. She sank to the ground, gasping for breath, her body filled with agony. As Salvos struggled to catch her breath, her vision became blurry. In her weakened state, she saw the red larva rushing towards her in a panic. Just as she closed her eyes, something mysterious happened. The system notification informed her that evolution was now available. Salvos had the chance to evolve from being an infant demon into a lesser demon. The concept of evolution was a bit confusing to her, but the system explained that she had fulfilled the requirements for five different subspecies evolutions. Surrounded by darkness, Salvos was presented with several system windows, each displaying a different subspecies option. The choices included Fiend, Fire Fiend, Hellhound, Imp, and Zealous Imp. Feeling uncertain, Salvos examined the shadowy images of the lesser demons. None of them felt quite right to her except for the Zealous Imp. With determination, she declared, This is me! and chose the Zealous Imp as her evolved form. She closed her eyes and experienced a floating sensation as the system notification confirmed the success successful completion of her evolution. When Salvos opened her eyes, she noticed that her vision had become sharper than before. As she looked at the red larva, even he seemed shocked for some reason. Curiously, Salvos examined her hands and was taken aback by what she saw. Her nails had grown long and had a feminine appearance. But what surprised her even more was when she spoke. Her voice had transformed into a lovely tone that she had never heard before. Salvos had transformed from a cute larva into a stunning female elf. She had flowing white hair, piercing yellow eyes, a small but sharp horn, and an alluring, slender figure. Another system window appeared, reminding her that she had evolved into a lesser demon. With this transformation, she gained two additional skill slots and three skill points. This allowed her to unlock new abilities such as Double Step, Fire Blast, and General Tool Proficiency. Salvo sat on the ground, her eyes fixed on her new appearance. She ran her fingers over her transformed skin, feeling a sense of bewilderment wash over her. Struggling to stand on her elongated legs, she tried to make sense of her situation. It was then that she realized she had evolved into a lesser demon. Her gaze fell upon the red larva who trembled in fear and confusion. Determined to reassure him, she introduced herself, saying, "'It's me, your companion.' However, the red larva continued to crawl away, sweating and trembling. Salvo sat down to level their heights and extended her arms towards the red larva, offering a friendly gesture. Eventually, the red larva approached and shook hands with her. Suddenly, another hellhound appeared from behind, surprising both of them. Salvos looked around, feeling annoyed. Upon checking the system, she discovered that this hellhound was only a level 13 demon. She grabbed her spear, activating her passive skill, General Tool Proficiency. With determination, she faced the hellhound, ordering the red larva to stay back. The hellhound was furious and ready to attack, but then, to their surprise, several more hellhounds emerged, varying in levels and sizes. Despite the overwhelming numbers, Salvos fearlessly prepared to confront them. One wolf lunged at her, and she immediately used her fire strike skill, striking the hellhound with her spear. She first defeated a level 13 spike hellhound, earning additional experience points. But the battle wasn't over. Three more hellhounds approached her, and Salvos swung her spear, hoping to intimidate them. However, the hellhounds became even more enraged and continued their advance. Then, Salvos pointed her finger at a hellhound and cast her new skill, Fire Blast. The power of her attack turned the wolf into ashes. Salvos then grabbed the red larva and held him tightly. In an instant, Salvos leaped over the hellhounds using her double-step skill, running as fast as she could. However, the hellhounds pursued relentlessly. While running, Salvos maintained a smile, urging the red larva to hold on and not let go. She didn't want to leave him behind. Glancing behind her, she used Fire Strike to attack the chasing hellhounds, continuing to run while keeping the red larva close. Eventually, she spotted a cliff and considered that jumping might help them lose the hellhounds. 
But their plan was interrupted when a large foot stomped down, blocking their path. A massive Hellbeast, a level 22 demon, stood before them. The Hellbeast growled menacingly, and Salvos retaliated with a fire blast. However, the Hellbeast emerged unscathed from the flames. The Hellbeast struck Salvos, and she attempted to block the attack with her spear. But the Hellbeast's strength overwhelmed her, slamming her into a corner. She closed her eyes, feeling intense pain, yet still held onto the red larva. When she opened her eyes, she was surprised to see the Hellbeast attacking the Hellhounds instead. Seizing the opportunity, she ran as fast as she could while the Hellbeast was distracted. The Hellbeast crushed the Hellhounds with its massive foot as Salvos fled with the Red Larva. Unbeknownst to her, the Red Larva had also leveled up from a level 9 to a level 10 demon larva. The Red Larva flinched upon realizing this and soon lost consciousness. The scene shifted. Salvos and the Larva lay on the ground, panting from the ride their escape. Salvos took a moment to catch her breath, relieved to be away from their enemies. Checking her system, she discovered that she had become a level 10 zealous imp. She had gained 5 stat points and 3 skill points. The system noted notifications indicated that she had leveled up from 10 to 12. Standing up, Salvos looked back and assured the larva that there was no need to be afraid because she would protect. However, before she could finish her sentence, something unexpected happened. Instead of the red larva, a man now stood behind her with long hair, red skin, and elf ear. He greeted her kindly with a smile. The man towered over Salvos, making her seem like his little sister. She was clueless about who this man was. A system window appeared, revealing that the man in front of her was a level 10 fiend. With the significant height difference, Salvos began to suspect that this man was the evolved form of the red larva, especially after she noticed only a pool of black ink where the larva had been. Studying the man intently, Salvos readied her fist to attack, her teeth gritted in determination. Surprisingly, the man burst into laughter, further confusing Salvos. Angrily, Salvos questioned why he was laughing and demanded him to stop. The man replied that her reaction was so hilarious that he couldn't help but laugh, even without knowing why. The man introduced himself as Heek, and they laughed and talked happily for some time. Salvos joyfully expressed that she had always considered him her companion and hadn't known he had a name. Heek responded that, indeed, he did have a name, and and Salvos was his leader. Salvos felt puzzled as to why Heek saw her as a leader. He reminded him that he had followed her after she saved him from that tall larva. With a dumbfounded expression, Salvos asked if that was the reason why he had been following her. She had always thought he was trying to steal her levels by killing her. Heek replied that he would never do such a thing. Salvos then asked if the reason Heek followed that level 2 larva was because she had saved him at some point. Hearing this, Heek's face turned sad, and he explained that he followed the larva because they were like a family. Heek revealed that he found himself in an inky black liquid, born alongside others, and only Salvos joined them later on. Heek felt a sense of sadness as he realized that the others were no longer there, leaving only him and Salvos. Observing Heek's sadness, Salvos tapped his hard abs to ask if he was okay. Heek honestly replied that he was genuinely sad. He felt upset that he had been grouped with others, his companions like Salvos, but they had either died or been captured by wild demons. Salvo still didn't fully understand Heek's feelings at that moment. While she wasn't entirely sure about the exact reason for his sadness, seeing Heek in this state made Salvos feel sad herself, and she didn't like it. In an attempt to comfort him, she held Heek's hand and reassured him. The others may be gone, but I'm still here. You're the one who said that I'm your leader, Salvos stated. This realization seemed to dawn on Heek, and Salvos continued, As long as you follow me... You won't be alone. A wide smile brightened Salvos's face as she spoke these words. Heek responded with a slight smile and nodded in agreement. Walking together, Salvos told Heek not to be sad anymore. She assured him that wherever they went, they would be together, fighting side by side and leveling up together. Suddenly, they noticed a giant spider approaching them. Heek agreed with Salvos's words, expressing his belief that as long as they were together, they would be fine. The spider attacked, and Heek blocked its attack with his arm. Salvos swiftly rushed towards the spider, slashing its abdomen with her spear combined with her fire strike skill. Heek joined the fight, grabbing one of the spider's legs and twisting it. Salvos unleashed her fire blast, striking the spider, and then jumped to stab its head with her spear. The spider screamed in agony, spitting out green blood. Together, they successfully defeated the giant spider, and both of them leveled up. Heek had reached level 13. As they prepared to leave, Salvos felt slightly irritated that Heek had leveled up twice, while she had only leveled up once. 
She jokingly remarked that it was unfair for her that he was leveling up faster. Heek reminded her that she was already at level 15, which made it harder for her to level up. Salvos chuckled and was about to say something, but then their system windows appeared simultaneously, surprising them both. They conversed and realized that they had received the same notification. Now entering the Demon King's domain, they continued walking for a long time, but they found nothing. Heek suggested leaving the place, but Salvos insisted that they had barely explored the area and that it was a new territory where they could level up and become stronger. Heek expressed his loyalty, stating that Salvos was his leader and that he would follow her orders. However, he admitted that he had a bad feeling about the place. Understanding his concern, Salvos turned around to go back the way they came. Heek asked if she was okay with his idea as he didn't want to force her. Salvos completely agreed with him, explaining that she had only wanted to see what made this place different, but now she suspected that it was nothing but danger. She had a hunch that this might be where where the tall demon had gone, and if they were to encounter them, these demons would either force them to follow, or worse, try to kill them. Salvo smiled and told Heek that she didn't want that to happen. Heek smiled slightly, glad that Salvos understood his concerns. As they were about to leave, something unexpected occurred. Heek was shocked as he noticed something unfamiliar. Someone was approaching them. When they could clearly see the person, it was a man with a bulkier body, ash-colored skin, and the same elf-like ears as Salvos and Heek. He stomped like a giant and clanged his weapon on the ground. Upon arriving in front of them, he declared, What's this? It seems responding to that contract call was not a bad idea after all. Two survivors and lesser demons at that. That's quite a feat, with a smile on his face. Salvos and Heek readied themselves for a potential fight in case this man intended to harm them. At this point, Heek couldn't see the man's level, so he asked Salvos. Salvos could clearly see the man's level and informed Heek that he was a level 42 Dejan. She believed that they couldn't fight a Dejan at their current hour. The Dejan grinned, showcasing his sharp teeth and boasted about being a greater demon, an evolution above Salvos. She struggled to comprehend the power he possessed over her. Holding her spear tightly, Salvos spoke up, telling the Dajin that they were not wild demons. She explained that they didn't want to fight him and there was no reason for them to engage in battle. Salvos politely requested the Dajin to leave them alone and promised that they wouldn't cause him any trouble. However, the Dajin argued that those wild demons Salvos mentioned were not different from him and Salvos herself. He believed that they were all selfish creatures driven by their instincts to kill and level up. Annoyed, Salvos retorted that even if the Dajin defeated them, the experience experience he would gain would be insignificant. You have nothing to gain from fighting us, she shouted. The Dejin slammed his weapon on the ground and disagreed, asserting that Salvos was wrong. He revealed that he knew Salvos had developed her identification skill to a high level, an unexpected ability for leveling up. Salvos was shocked by the Dejin's knowledge about her. Noticing Heek's size, the Dejin speculated that he was not just an ordinary fiend. He deduced that Heek had undergone an uncommon evolution, possibly even a rare one. The Dejin declared, Now come with me, lesser demons, to greet your king. Salvos and Heek were unsure about what to do, considering the vast difference in levels between them and the Dejin. They believed they didn't stand a chance, so Salvos decided it was better to follow the Dejin for now. However, before complying, Salvos wanted to know what the Dejin intended to do with them if they followed him. You must be mistaken, Imp. That wasn't a request, the Dejin replied, surprising Salvos. Without warning, the Dejin attacked them with his massive weapon. Salvos and Heek swiftly dodged, but Salvos stumbled and fell to the ground. The Dejin approached her and coldly informed her that he would drag their half-dead bodies to his lair if necessary. He planned to fulfill the contract and receive great rewards from King Rignorix, the Demon King, for capturing both a fiend and an imp. I am not just an imp, I am Salvos! She shouted defiantly, casting her fire blast and launching it at the Dejan. The Dejan smiled as he conjured his burning haze, creating a cloud of purple ashes that surrounded him. Salvos used her spear to block the Dejan's attack. The Dejan remarked that Salvos having a fire creation skill was unexpected, indicating that she held more value than he initially thought. With determined steps, he approached Salvos, who realized that the purple cloud was made of ashes. The Dejin was incredibly fast, and Salvos could sense his relentless pursuit. Just as he was about to strike Salvos from behind, she managed to evade in the nick of time. The Dejin smiled menacingly, taunting Salvos that she couldn't run forever. To his surprise, Heek launched a crushing blow towards the Dejin, aiming for a powerful punch. 
But despite the strength behind Heek's attack, the Daijin remained unharmed and called it feeble. Determined to demonstrate his own strength, the Daijin clenched his fist and delivered a devastating punch to Heek, causing him to be sent flying and vomit blood. Salvos worriedly looked at Heek, wanting to rush to his side. However, the Daijin blocked her path, his hand reaching for her face. Anger surged within Salvos as she clenched her teeth. She unleashed a fire strike, combining it with her spear, and attacked the Dejin. The Dejin, familiar with the weapon, caught it with his bare hand. He slammed his weapon on the ground, causing the earth to tremble and shatter. Salvo swiftly jumped back, avoiding the powerful force unleashed by the Dejin. The Dejin now had a wound on his hand and blood dripped from it. He realized that Salvos wielded a medium-grade weapon, and he was puzzled about how a lesser demon like her had obtained it. However, Salvos had no intention of answering his questions. Filled with anger, the Dejin raised his weapon high and unleashed his tremendous skill, the Sphere of Ash and Cinder, a swirling circle formed above him, which he planned to use as a projectile to attack Salvos. Since he believed that Salvos didn't want to come with him, he decided to eliminate her and take Heek instead. For the Dejin, having one captive was better than none. Salvos quickly dodged the attack from the Dejin and used her double-step skill to create distance between them. Even though she managed to escape the assault, she could still feel the pain lingering. It became clear to her that if she hadn't used double steps to evade the attack, it could have ended her life. However, Salvos knew that she couldn't rely on double steps every time. She realized that the Dejin would be prepared to strike again, and next time she might not be able to dodge it. Just as the Dejin was ready to deliver a fatal blow, a sudden appearance disrupted the scene. Heek emerged and boldly rode onto the Dejin's shoulder, grabbing his head tightly. Escape! You can do it! Heek shouted to Salvos, urging her to get away. Salvos hesitated, not wanting to abandon her companion, but before she could react, the Dejin managed to break free from Heek's grasp and struck him forcefully. Heek was sent flying, and Salvos, feeling a mix of guilt and regret, fled the scene, apologizing silently for leaving her companion behind with their enemy. Then the scene shifts, and we see the Jin carrying Heek on his shoulder, somewhere in the distance. Blood drops fall from Heek's wounds, creating a trail behind them. After a while, Salvos found herself outside the Demon King's domain. She felt a deep sadness for the fact that Heek had sacrificed himself to save her, while she had chosen to leave him behind to be taken by the Demon King Rignorix. Now alone, walking on the white surface, she questioned her decision and wondered if it was the right thing to do. She had been alone for the majority of her existence, with only a brief time spent with Heek. She wasn't sure what to do next. The thought of leveling up, which had been her primary focus, felt uncertain now. She pondered if there was more to her life than simply evolving. She raised her hand and clenched it, determined to find a better reason for her actions. Salvos admitted that she enjoyed leveling up, feeling a sense of completion with each evolution. But she understood that if she were to act solely on her instincts to fight and evolve, she would become no different from the wild demons she had encountered. Heek was her companion, the one who recognized her as Salvos. While they might not always be together, that recognition was important to her. She wanted to acknowledge him in return. Standing outside the Demon King's domain, Salvos encountered an enemy similar to herself, but defeated it on her own. She turned back and stood before the entrance, looking at it with determination. Meanwhile, blood splattered as she stepped into it, following Heek trail. She ventured into Lucerna's lair, tracking Heek's blood until it led her to him. Salvos noticed Lucerna at a table, preoccupied with something while Heek remained locked up behind him. There was a pentacle in the middle of them. Suddenly, Lucerna slammed his hand on the table in frustration, angered by the fact that Salvos possessed a more powerful weapon than him. Salvos overheard the conversation between Lucerna and Heek. Salvos felt the need to help Heek while Lucerna was occupied with his contract. As Lucerna turned away, Salvo swiftly moved to Heek's side. Heek was surprised to see her there. Suddenly, Lucerna shouted in frustration as he faced what seemed like a mirror with a bright blue light. He continued speaking to himself while Salvos tried to assist Heek in escaping. Salvos kept an eye on Lucerna to avoid getting caught. Eventually, Lucerna called Heek, signaling that it was time for him to meet the king. Using the spear, Salvos aimed to break the lock. With a successful strike, she opened it, causing a noise that caught Lucerna's attention. He screamed in anger as Salvos and Heek made their getaway. Lucerna cast his sphere of ash and cinder while Salvos hurled the spear at him, 
hitting his shoulder. Lucerna cried out in pain, blood splattering. The sphere of ash and cinder headed towards Salvos and Heek, but they managed to dodge it. Lucerna clenched the spear, pulling it out of his shoulder. He confronted Salvos directly, and she instructed Heek to go ahead. Lucerna attacked her, but she leaped to avoid his strike. Salvo summoned her magical fire and fought to regain her balance. She unleashed her fiery skill against Lucerna, but to her surprise, he remained unscathed by the flames. Lucerna, fueled by rage, cast his burning haze and launched an attack at Salvos, striking her and causing her to fall to the ground. Lucerna approached her, preparing to end her life. Meanwhile, Heek called out Salvos's name, deeply concerned for her well-being. Despite the pain she was experiencing, Salvos exerted all her strength to rise. At that critical moment, Lucerna readied another skill, but before he could strike, Salvos utilized her double step and pushed Lucerna into a nearby portal. She propelled herself into the air, but Lucerna managed to grab her foot. Salvos desperately tried to hold onto the ground, but Lucerna's grip was strong. Heek, determined to help Salvos, sprinted towards them. Salvos extended her hand, urging Heek to grab hold of it, but unfortunately, it was too late. Salvos was completely pulled into the portal, leaving Heek alone by Lucerna's lamp. Salvos's system window appeared, notifying her that she was leaving Lucerna's lamp and the Demon King's domain. Another notification indicated that she was entering the mortal realm leaving behind Nexius Netherworld. As they fell into the underground, both Salvos and Lucerna landed in a pentacle. To their surprise, they found several men wearing black robes and masks, their faces hidden. With a confident smile, one of the men addressed Lucerna as the almighty Lucerna, greater demon of the Netherland, and expressed their plea. However, his expression changed to confusion upon seeing Salvos standing alongside Lucerna. Feeling bewildered by the situation, Salvos observed the unmasked man, who turned out to be a level 45 cultist. The man smirked knowingly, and with delight he exclaimed, It worked! The man seemed pleased with the successful summoning, claiming that they had offered a virgin sacrifice. He declared that Lucerna and Salvos were the demons they had summoned. He stated that he had fulfilled the terms of their contract by providing the sacrifice and now demanded their assistance. His request centered around a town called Dawnwind. He revealed that he had once been infatuated with Lucy. As the cultist continued his narrative, Salvos noticed that the choker around Lucerna's neck had shattered. Disregarding this, the cultist went on to share his personal story. Filled with excitement, he had planned to ask Lucy out. However, his dreams were shattered when a group of gold-ranked adventurers, led by a warrior named Nolan, arrived in town. Lucy fell in love with Nolan and eloped with him, leaving the cultist heartbroken. As Salvos listened to the man's story, tears filled his eyes and his voice trembled with emotion. However, Salvos couldn't understand any of his sentiments or why he was sharing this story. The man suddenly screamed, filled with hatred and a burning desire for revenge against Nolan and his band of adventurers. He called upon Gin Lucerna, pleading for the powerful Lucerna to destroy Nolan and make him pay for what he had done. Salvos, feeling overwhelmed and confused, began searching for an escape route. She spotted an exit, but three lower-level cultists stood in her way. One of them interrupted the level 45 cultist's rant, reminding him of their true goal, seeking revenge against King Hale for his oppressive taxation. The level 45 cultist dismissed their goal, claiming that not even a mighty demon like Lucerna could destroy the king. Suddenly, Gin Lucerna erupted in anger, his restraining ring broken. He unleashed his fury upon the cultists, attacking them one by one with his spear. The cultist tried to remind Lucerna of their contract, but the powerful demon ignored him. Witnessing the chaos unfold, Salvo saw her chance to escape. Seizing the moment, she leaped out of the pentacle, casting a terrifying fire strike that scared away the cultist attempting to block her path. The cultists ordered their followers to stop Salvos, but their commands fell on deaf ears as Lucerna turned his wrath upon them. Meanwhile, Salvos made her escape, narrowly avoiding a spear thrown by a cultist. Now facing three cultists blocking her way to the exit, they attacked her with magic and weapons. In response, Salvos unleashed another fire strike, defeating two of the cultists and leaving only one standing. The last remaining cultist lunged at her with a spear, but Salvos retaliated with a powerful fire strike, breaking the spear and leaving the cultist defenseless. Unbeknownst to her, two other cultists had sneaked up behind her and slashed at her back. Despite the pain, she fought back, 
unleashing a devastating fire blast that defeated both of them. She continued running, getting closer to the exit with every step. Finally, she leaped out of the cave and into a forest, dashing away without looking back. However, she stumbled over a rock and fell to the ground. She realized she had managed to lose her pursuers. As Salvos checked notifications about her increasing attributes, exhaustion overcame her and she passed out. She was awakened by a dream of Heek's voice urging her to run. She found herself alone in a strange green land, realizing she had entered the mortal realm. Although everything still hurt, she was grateful to be alive. Suddenly, she heard a rustling sound behind her. Turning around, she expected to face a fearsome hellhound, but was surprised to find herself face to face with a level 18 dark wolf. Despite the pain and confusion, Salvos readied herself for the fight. With a single fire strike, she defeated the wolf. Annoyed by how easy the battle was compared to her previous fights, she prepared to continue her journey back to the netherworld. As she made her way, she couldn't help but be distracted by the beauty of the creatures she encountered along the way. Butterflies, snails, caterpillars, they were all so different from what she was accustomed to. But the sky puzzled her the most as it changed colors, shifting from blue to orange, then dark, before returning to blue again. As Salvos continued her journey through the unfamiliar realm, she couldn't shake the feeling of being hunted. The rustling sounds would always precede the appearance of wolves intent on attacking her. Frustrated by these constant encounters, she fought them off using her fire magic, growing more irritated with each battle. Upon reaching level 19, Salvos came across a wolf pup that had no level indicator. Before she could ponder this strange occurrence, a massive level 30 dark wolf emerged, clearly the leader of the pack. So is this the last of your pack? That's why they were all such low levels, right? I've already taken care of the rest of your pack, Salvos questioned, provoking a fierce growl from the wolf. She realized that the wolf was angry with her for killing so many of its pack members. Addressing the remaining wolves, Salvo stated, Your minions attacked me first, and that's why they're all dead now. I'm prepared to take all of you down, including the level 30 dark wolf. Two wolves suddenly leaped at her from behind, but she was ready. Without even looking, she swiftly struck them down with her fire strike. The lower level wolves retreated into the grass, leaving only their leader behind. Salvos activated her fire strike skill and focused, keeping an eye on the wolves hiding in the grass, attempting to confuse her. Suddenly, three wolves sprang forward simultaneously to attack her, but Salvos managed to defeat them all. Blood splattered around her as she kneeled on the ground, catching sight of another approaching wolf. With a roar, the wolf lunged at her, but Salvos quickly used double step to charge at it, striking with a powerful fire strike. The wolf managed to escape through a shadow portal. Undeterred, Salvos continued her assault on the remaining wolves, almost defeating them all. Unbeknownst to her, the levelless wolf had regained consciousness and stood behind her. Seizing the opportunity, the level 30 dark wolf emerged from the shadow portal and attacked Salvos, biting her arm. Pain shot through her, causing her to scream out. Enraged, she unleashed a fire blast targeting the dark wolf. However, the flame barely left a scratch. It seemed that this was the only wolf remaining that Salvos needed to defeat. But she wasn't sure if she could win this fight. To her surprise, the levelless wolf lunged at the level 30 dark wolf biting its neck. Salvos realized that the levelless wolf was helping her. With the level 30 dark wolf wounded and unable to continue the fight, it fled to escape. Salvos was puzzled by the wolf's actions and approached it cautiously. The wolf bowed to her. Are you grateful? Salvos asked, understanding that the dark wolves had been a threat to this wolf as well. The wolf nodded in response. Well, it's no problem. They were attacking me too, so I defeated them all, Salvos said with a wide smile. She asked the wolf if it knew the way to the netherworld, but it only whined in response. Undeterred, Salvos asked if there was someone who might know how to reach the netherworld. The wolf pointed in a specific direction, catching Salvos's attention. Can I find someone who can help me there? She inquired. Deciding to trust the wolf's guidance, Salvos set off in that direction. After defeating several more wolves, Salvos reached level 20. Meanwhile, in the depths of the forest, two people were having a conversation inside a carriage. They discussed the ongoing invasion of Phallus Field by the Dusk Wolves and the lack of adventurers willing to confront them. They spoke of the gold-ranked adventurers hired by the Ignoria Empire and Electric Kingdom to defend against the monster attacks while their armies were engaged in war. It was suggested that any smart adventurer would avoid Nixa and head straight to the kingdom where they were being hired for protection. Unexpectedly, Salvos approached them, seeking directions to the netherworld. Startled by the appearance of an unfamiliar creature like Salvos, 
The two men were taken aback and felt a sense of nervousness. They screamed in terror upon seeing Salvos, especially because of the horns on her head. They immediately concluded that she was a demon. Salvos, however, gave them a wide smile and asked her question once again. Unfortunately, both men had no idea about the place she was asking for. They exchanged frightened glances, then suddenly screamed loudly. Confused by their reaction, Salvos activated her fire strike skill and prepared herself for a fight. But to her surprise, the two men quickly ran away, screaming about a demon leaving their carriage behind. Salvos deduced that the men must have thought she was about to attack them, which frightened them into fleeing. She felt disheartened that she didn't get an answer to her question. She glanced at the horse, hoping it could somehow provide some information, but all it did was snort, startling her. Nonetheless, Salvos continued her search for someone who could give her the answer she sought. Every time she approached people with a friendly smile, they screamed and ran away in fear. She began to realize that this was a common human response to encountering a demon. She wondered if all humans reacted like this when they saw a demon. She remembered the cultists who had chased her instead of running away, realizing that they must have known she wasn't a dangerous demon. The people she encountered in this new place seemed afraid simply because they didn't realize she posed no threat. Lost in her thoughts, she noticed something interesting ahead, a village. Within the village, she overheard a man reporting to a warrior that he had seen a demon in the nearby forest. According to the warrior, there were reports of a large demon responsible for destroying Fairdale. The man added that he had encountered an imp wielding two bloody daggers, chasing him just outside the village. Spotting Salvos, the man pointed her out to the others. Salvos waved at them, flashing a broad smile while holding her flaming daggers. Demon! A demon is attacking Silvergrove! Sound the alarm! Summon the guild to send adventurers! The warrior shouted urgently. Hold on! Stop shouting! I'm just an imp trying to find my way back to the netherworld! Salvos responded, trying to explain herself. However, the archers quickly notched their arrows, readying to attack. Salvos continued to explain that she wasn't a wild demon and had no intention of hurting anyone. Yet her words fell on deaf ears as a sharp spear was pointed directly at her. The warrior, who was at level 28, commanded her to keep her distance. I won't attack you unless you attack me, Salvos assured, raising her hands in a non-threatening manner. She was about to ask for directions to the netherworld when the guard, infuriated by her continued talking, lunged at her. Salvos skillfully blocked his attack, but as the warrior had initiated the fight, Salvos was forced to defend herself. Countering the warrior's strike with a powerful fire strike of her own, Salvos sensed danger approaching. She agilely leaped to avoid an incoming arrow realizing that the archers were also attacking her. Left with no other choice, she threw one of her flaming daggers, hitting an archer in the shoulder. Furious at their refusal to listen to her, Salvos noticed a group of warriors armed with shields and swords surrounding her. Among them, a level 18 mage caught her attention. He was casting a spell that looked highly dangerous. As one of the warriors tried to attack her, Salvos used her double-step skill to swiftly jump over him and strike him with a fire strike. She repeated this maneuver with the other warriors. The mage unleashed his magic towards Salvos, who skillfully dodged and weaved to avoid the spells. In a swift move, she struck the mage with her flaming dagger, incapacitating him. Standing tall, Salvos twirled her dagger confidently and declared, You're all weak. However, before she could celebrate her small victory, another group of warriors and low-level adventurers arrived at the scene. It's time to protect Silver Grove. Whoever kills the demon will receive 50 gold coins declared a level 14 warrior, igniting a new challenge for Salvos. In a state of being outnumbered and uncertain about where her adversaries had come from, Salvos felt overwhelmed. As the mage launched another attack at her, she was struck by the powerful magic and fell to the ground, weakened and trembling. To her surprise, the mage remained standing despite her previous counterattack. A warrior charged at Salvos, but despite her weakened state, she managed to skillfully dodge his attack. Her attention was drawn to one of the warrior's dreams drinking something that emitted a green light, which she realized was a healing potion. The man then handed the bottle to another injured warrior, advising him to drink it. The mage warned everyone to be cautious, mentioning that their level 50 captain, Nathan, was on his way. Hearing this, Salvos made a quick decision to escape. She utilized her double-step ability to swiftly get away, with the warriors giving chase. As night fell, Salvos successfully eluded her pursuers. Leaning against a tree, panting and wounded, she felt defeated. She pondered why everything in the mortal realm seemed intent on causing her harm. She longed for Heek, her companion in the netherworld, who accepted her for who she was.
Clenching her fist, she made a vow to become stronger and compel these humans to reveal how she could return to the netherworld. Continuing her wandering, Salvos kept her eyes peeled for anything useful. Spotting a level 24 wild green stag, she seized the opportunity to challenge it, driven by her desire to grow stronger not just for herself, but also for the sake of Heek, her sole companion. Her determination paid off as she defeated the green stag single-handedly. Salvos then came to a realization that the mortal realm was teeming with its own kind of wild demons or monsters, such as the dark wolves who would attack her without hesitation. These creatures were wild, devoid of reason, and didn't recognize her as one of their own. To them, she was simply an obstacle to be overcome. After triumphing over a large beetle, Salvos leveled up to level 21. Fearlessly facing various monsters, she rapidly increased her level to 23 by vanquishing a group of golems. Annoyed by the abundance of rocks in the area, she kicked a small one. The rock careened around until it struck someone who had been drawn to the cave by the loud noise. At the sight of the figure clad in a black cloak, Salvos found herself at a loss for words. Despite using her identification skill, she couldn't discern any information about him, not even his level. This made her wary, as the inability to identify his level indicated that he was significantly higher in level than she was. Additionally, she was puzzled by her inability to determine his subspecies. The man tightened his grip on his sword, coming to the conclusion that Salvos, the imp before him, was responsible for attacking Silvergrove and destroying Fairdale. Charging towards her, Salvos desperately tried to explain that she hadn't attacked or destroyed anything. These golems attacked me first, just like the green stag, dark wolves, and all those other monsters, she protested. The man was taken aback by Salvos's ability to speak like a human. Salvos clarified that she had been attempting to communicate with humans all along, but they had always run away from her. She insisted that all she wanted was to know how to return to the netherworld, but no one had provided her with an answer. Despite her pleas, the man remained skeptical. He swung his sword at Salvos, but she evaded the attack and countered with a powerful fire strike. Attempting to strike him from behind, she discovered that he had activated his shield, causing her flaming dagger to be deflected. Salvos reacted swiftly by kicking the shield and following up with another fire strike, which destroyed the shield and sent the man tumbling down, causing him to drop his sword. As he rose, clutching his head in pain, Salvos quickly grabbed her sword and attacked the man with it. She combined her sword strikes with a powerful fire strike to intimidate him. Pointing the sword at him, Salvos assured him that he wouldn't be harmed if he guided her to the netherworld. In response, the man angrily accused her of killing innocent people and children in a place called Fairdale. Confused, Salvos insisted that she had never harmed humans. Only monsters who attacked her. In her moment of confusion, the man took advantage and punched her, causing her to be thrown back and drop her sword. The man proclaimed that he wasn't a violent person and didn't understand why he was acting this way. He believed that a creature like Salvos, if she was truly a murderer, couldn't be allowed to roam free. Determined, he picked up his sword and charged at Salvos with the intention to harm her. Salvos retaliated with her fire strike and closed the distance using her double-step ability. Her fiery attack landed, but it didn't deliver a lethal blow. The man stumbled back, clutching his chest as Salvos swiftly grabbed hold of his shirt. Realizing that he had no chance of defeating Salvos, the man pleaded for mercy. He insisted that he hadn't murdered anyone and that he simply wanted to return to the netherworld. Correcting her with a weak smile, he told her it was actually Fairdale, not Silverdale. Annoyed by the man's correction, Salvos swiftly kicked him in the neck, rendering him unconscious. As this happened, a system notification appeared, notifying Salvos that her basic mana manipulation skill had reached level 5. Standing with the man's sword in her hand, Salvos noticed a ring that she had found. The man regained consciousness and realized he was still alive. He also noticed that Salvos was holding his ring. Salvos recognized it as a ring of lesser protection, a medium-grade item that could absorb damage and recharge over time. Sensing its importance to the man, she hesitated to return it. The man attempted to retrieve his ring, but Salvos threatened him with his own sword, leaving him with no choice but to remain silent. She pointed out that she could have killed him for the experience points but chose not to. Demanding to know the location of the netherworld, she warned him that he needed to tell her if he wanted to leave alive. However, the man insisted that he genuinely didn't know. Infuriated, Salvos accused him of lying, but he pleaded with her, stating that he had never been to the demon's realm and begging her not to kill him. To his surprise, Salvos accepted his answer with a wide grin, releasing him and warning him that any further attacks would result in his death. As the man prepared to leave, he hesitated and asked one 
once more if Salvos truly hadn't been the one responsible for destroying Fairdale. Salvos assured him that she hadn't, which seemed to satisfy the man. Unexpectedly, he offered to help her find her way back to the Netherworld, admitting that he wasn't sure if he could, but he was willing to try. Initially enraged, thinking the man was playing games with her, Salvos conjured a flame. Startled, the man quickly reassured her that he wasn't lying and that he genuinely wanted to help her return home. Hearing his sincerity, Salvos expressed her desire to go back to the Netherworld and reunite with her companion. However, the man sought assurance that she wouldn't harm anyone along the way. Salvos confidently replied that humans had been trying to kill her since she arrived and that she hadn't killed anyone who hadn't attacked her first. Understanding her difficult situation, the man pledged to assist her. He wasn't sure if he could personally send her back to the netherworld, but he believed he could find someone who could. Salvos agreed without hesitation, surprising the man, who asked her again if she was absolutely sure. Salvos confidently reaffirmed her decision. The man then informed her that they would be heading to Hazelberry, a city located a few miles to the north. Salvos was eager to embark on their journey, but the man soon realized that she had no idea which way was north. As they set off toward Hazelberry, Salvos frequently became distracted by the sight of lovely butterflies, much to the man's amusement and occasional frustration. The man introduced himself to Salvos as Daniel, and he asked her for her name. Salvos happily introduced herself to Daniel. To her surprise, Daniel then produced a cloak and explained that it was to help hide her appearance. The cloak was called the Cloak of Shadow, and it not only covered her face, but also offered protection from cuts. Daniel told Salvos that if if anyone saw her true form, they might try to harm her. He also gave her a necklace of lesser obfuscation, which could make her look like a warrior or a maid. Putting on the cloak and necklace, Salvos transformed in Daniel's eyes from a level 23 imp to a level 23 rogue. She realized that Daniel must have been using similar artifacts to conceal his level and subspecies from her. With her horns and ears hidden by the cloak and her new artifacts, Daniel assured her that she would be safe from unwanted attention. They continued walking and Daniel mentioned that they were close to Hazelberry. As they arrived at Hazelberry, they encountered two guards at the gate. The guards asked if they were part of the Iron Champions Company, but Daniel replied that they were independent. This resulted in a demand for an entrance fee of five silver coins each. Daniel quickly paid the fee and they were allowed into the city. Out, confused about the fee, Salvos asked Daniel about it. He explained that adventurers who weren't affiliated with the Iron Champions Company had to pay an entry fee. He mentioned that being part of the company had certain perks. Intrigued, Salvos asked about the Iron Champions Company, and Daniel explained that it was a local group of adventurers who had control over most of the adventurers in the area. Salvos continued to ask questions and wondered what an adventurer was. Daniel smiled and said that he had a lot to explain. They entered an inn, and Daniel began to explain that adventurers were humans who took on dangerous tasks for money. They raided dungeons and exterminated monster lairs to keep their cities safe and earn a living. To work as an adventurer, they had to sign up with the Adventurers Guild. However, with a large number of adventurers, the guild couldn't manage everything. That's where adventuring companies came in. These companies were started by individuals with enough funds, and adventurers paid a membership fee to join them. In return, they gained access to special contracts, markets, and locations. For instance, Daniel had accepted a request from the Iron Champions Company to cull the population of Stampede Elks. However, Salvos had already taken care of the Elks before Daniel's arrival. All right, that should cover everything. Do you have any questions? Daniel finished, feeling a bit exhausted from his explanations. Despite his efforts to explain things thoroughly, Salvos still had questions about coins, the adventuring guild, dungeons, inns, and much more. Daniel sighed and realized he had given Salvos a lot to take in. He promised to cover another topic the next day, but for now he needed some rest and told Salvos that she could take a nap as well. Salvos, unfamiliar with the concept of napping, received another explanation from Daniel. He explained that he was going to sleep and acknowledged that she might not be familiar with the idea of unconscious rest. Once they were inside their room, Salvos reminded Daniel of his promise to help her return to the netherworld. Even in their current location, she held on to the hope that he would fulfill his commitment. Suspicious, Salvos prepared to cast her flame, suspecting Daniel of deceit. Panicked, Daniel quickly reassured her that he was indeed committed to helping her, but the time for action 
resurrection had not yet come. He promised that the next day, upon waking, he would do everything in his power to find a way for Salvos to return to the netherworld. Salvos maintained her flame, continuing to cast it, but she had no intention of harming Daniel in the room. Instead, she observed her surroundings, using her identification skill on everything, including the clock. The skill revealed the truth about the object she examined, but it didn't tell her the time. Sitting there, perplexed by the purpose of the clock, Salvos grew annoyed and ended up throwing it away, accidentally hitting Daniel on the head. The following morning, as the sky brightened, Salvos and Daniel left the small room in the inn. Salvos had grown bored from being cooped up all night. She couldn't even wander around freely. Furthermore, once Daniel woke up, he insisted that Salvos wear different clothes for reasons she couldn't fully understand. She noticed that humans had certain body parts they needed to cover. One advantage of being idle throughout the night was that Salvos managed to level up her rest skill for the first time. Although she wasn't entirely sure of the benefits this higher level brought, she assumed it allowed her to recover more quickly when resting. As they walked, Daniel suddenly asked about the events of the previous night. Salvos replied, I kept trying to use my identification skill on the clock. It tells time, but it never told me what time is. Daniel smiled, relieved that Salvos hadn't encountered a serious problem. He informed her that they were nearing the Adventurer's Guild and reminded Salvos to stay close and avoid drawing attention. When she asked if she should sit down instead, he didn't answer, thinking she wouldn't understand for the time being. Upon reaching the Adventurer's Guild, Salvos noticed the murmuring crowd and decided to use her identification skill on Daniel. She was shocked to learn that he was only a level 15 warrior to her her, he seemed much stronger than that. Daniel explained that he was actually at a higher level, but was using a necklace of greater obfuscation, which could conceal both his class and level. He didn't go into detail about why he chose to hide his level, claiming it was complicated, which left Salvos feeling frustrated. Inside the guild, Salvos activated her identification skill and observed numerous adventurers of varying levels. As Daniel approached an attendant, Salvos tapped him to inquire about her return to the netherworld. Daniel cautioned her to be quiet and not share such things aloud as it could put her in danger. He assured her that he would gather information and do his best to find a way for her to return, holding Salvos's hand as they proceeded. Then Daniel went to the receptionist to ask about the situation, but before he could speak, someone intervened from behind, saying, It's Daniel, back from hunting those stampeding elks. However, upon looking at his empty hands, it became clear that he had failed his mission. Blake approached Daniel, but Salvos stepped in between them, blocking his path. Blake jokingly referred to Salvos as Daniel's girlfriend, suggesting that Daniel was acting tougher because of her presence. Daniel quickly denied the claim, stating that Salvos was not his girlfriend and requested not to involve her. When Blake asked what Daniel would do about it, Salvos questioned Daniel if Blake was his companion. Daniel distanced himself from any association with Blake, expressing his desire to not be linked to him. As they prepared to leave, Blake remarked that that Daniel was merely bragging about tasks he couldn't accomplish. He was about to continue his mocking when he suddenly paused, seemingly realizing something. Daniel grew anxious, fearing that Blake had discovered Salvos was a demon. However, Blake simply laughed, excited to learn that Salvos was not just an ordinary girl, but a level 23 rogue. Curiosity piqued, Blake inquired why Salvos hadn't joined the Iron Champions Company yet, as they were actively recruiting. He claimed they had access to special locations throughout Silver Grove and Phallus Field, even offering Salvos the opportunity to explore a newly discovered dungeon. Would you like to join us and gain access to these exciting adventures? He asked. Daniel remained silent, observing the conversation unfold. Salvos turned to him, asking if he truly disliked Blake. After Daniel confirmed his dislike, Salvos declined Blake's offer. Frustrated, Blake grabbed her and questioned her decision to choose a novice like Daniel over him. Annoyed by his behavior, Salvos clenched her fist and delivered a powerful punch to Blake's groin. Blake was sent flying backward, landing on the ground in agony, crying out in pain. Salvos gestured for Daniel to accompany her outside. Once they were away from the commotion, Daniel informed her about her attack on Blake. Salvos defended herself, explaining that she had only done so because Blake was trying to force her to go with him, and his behavior reminded her of someone she disliked. But you said you wouldn't attack anyone, Daniel pointed out. Salvos clarified, I didn't say I wouldn't attack. I said I wouldn't execute anyone. And as far as I remember, you didn't say there was anything wrong with hurting them. I only punched Blake. I didn't even use my claws. 
Daniel scratched his head and informed Salvos that she had hit Blake in a vulnerable spot. Daniel, feeling a bit uneasy, asked her not to hit him in that same spot, as it would cause a lot of pain. I can't promise that. Now how do we get back to the nether, my home? Salvos inquired. We'll start by visiting the library and then head to the local temple. The library was a treasure trove of books, holding vast amounts of information. However, despite searching through the many resources, neither Salvos nor Daniel found anything that could help Salvos return to the netherworld. After their unsuccessful search in the library, Salvos walked away with a disappointed expression on her face. Daniel hurriedly caught up with her, apologizing for not finding the information they needed. He had hoped the library would have more useful knowledge, but he admitted that most of it was already known to him. They didn't have anything for us, Salvos asked angrily, glaring at Daniel. Their only remaining option now was to visit the temple of Hazelberry. As they made their way to the temple, Salvos remained skeptical, suspecting that Daniel might be misleading leading her. According to Daniel, temples were places where humans gathered to summon spirits. He explained that these spirits were similar to demons, originating from a different plane of existence and fulfilling contracts for humans. However, unlike demons from the netherworld, these spirits came from the spirit plane and were not considered evil. Although Salvos didn't fully understand what Daniel meant, they entered the temple and were greeted by a level 31 priest. The priest warmly welcomed them and inquired about their purpose at the humble sanctuary of Fauna. Daniel confirmed their intention to learn more about summoning rituals. The priest expressed their willingness to show anyone interested in spirits the remarkable way they were connected to and became part of their world. Although he clarified that he was not the head priest, he hoped to provide satisfactory service to them. These temples served as bridges between the mortal realm and the spirit plane, allowing summoners to form contracts with their summoned spirits. While Salvos observed the surroundings and appeared confused by human practices, Daniel asked her to save her questions for later. They followed the priest further, heading to the summoning pool, a tool used by the Sanctuary of Fauna to aid in summoning their spirits. As Salvos looked at the pool, she saw her reflection in the water. The priest explained that water was one of the fundamental elements in nature often overlooked by humans. It was vital for sustaining life, yet only spirits could thrive without it. The temple used water as a medium to establish a connection, attracting spirits that were concerned with life. Daniel found himself puzzled about how the portal functioned, and sensing his curiosity, the priest was willing to answer his questions. However, before doing so, the priest inquired about his motive for seeking this wisdom and if there was something specific he wished to achieve. Daniel struggled to find the right words, since their visit was primarily to help a demon return to her own world. While Salvos listened to the conversation, she couldn't help but be drawn to her own reflection in the water. Suddenly, her eyes widened as she saw a pink wolf emerge from the pool. The priest informed her that the wolf's name was Sakura, a level 42 beastkin. Fear coursed through Salvos, making her instinctively want to run away. However, Sakura smiled at her, mentioning her unique name. The priest reassured Salvos, explaining that Sakura was the guardian spirit of their temple. Sakura had been protecting the temple since its establishment, even after the priest who summoned her passed away. Way. This was a testament to the enduring power of contracts between humans and spirits. As the priest affectionately patted Sakura's head, Daniel wondered if he should do the same. The priest encouraged him, stating that Sakura enjoyed such gestures. However, when the priest asked why Salvos and Daniel sought this knowledge, they were unsure of how to respond. Daniel explained that adventurers were seeking to fulfill a contract to slay a rampaging demon in the towns and villages of Fallsteel. They hoped to find an alternative to direct combat, as they were not yet at a high level. They considered banishing the demon back to the netherworld. Sakura interjected, remarking that the situation was not what it seemed. She explained that a cloak could deceive the eyes, but not the nose. She claimed to smell the scent of ash and blood, causing Salvos and Daniel to grow anxious. While Daniel spoke of their intent to slay the demon, Sakura criticized his focus on devising tricks. She warned that the demon would continue to grow stronger and wreak havoc until either everything was destroyed or the demon itself was defeated. With those haunting words, Sakura leapt away, leaving Salvos and Daniel puzzled by her cryptic message. 
The priest apologized for Sakura's enigmatic nature, explaining that she often spoke in such ways. The priest also shared his belief that banishing a demon back to the netherworld was unlikely. Demon summoning and spirit summoning were vastly different. Demon contracts were short-term, and it was ultimately up to the demon to decide whether it returned to its realm. Armed with these insights, Salvos and Daniel posed more questions before bidding farewell to the priest. Again, without getting any useful information, Daniel apologized to Salvos and continued to say that the spirit had only spoken nonsense. However, suddenly Salvos seemed to understand something. She shouted, Lucerna, and explained that the demon attacking humans was called Lucerna. Daniel asked who Lucerna was, and Salvos replied that he was a greater demon summoned by a cultist to assassinate a king or something similar. She admitted that she didn't hear the details clearly when they were summoned, as she was confused at the time. Upon hearing this, Daniel shouted, questioning how Salvos knew so much about the greater demon and why she didn't share this important information sooner. Salvos explained that she was forcefully summoned alongside the greater demon and wasn't aware that in the human realm, demons could only come through summoning. She had assumed there were other demons present, similar to the netherworld. Feeling betrayed, Daniel pointed his finger at Salvos, accusing her of deceiving him and causing people to die. Before he could finish his sentence, Salvos delivered a devastating punch to Daniel's groin, causing him to fall to the ground. She asserted that she was not a liar and that she genuinely didn't know the specifics of demon summoning in the human realm. In pain, Daniel apologized, admitting that his anger had gotten the better of him. He acknowledged that it wasn't Salvo's fault. Getting up from the ground, he suggested that they needed to go to the Adventure Guild as soon as possible to inform them of the situation. When they arrived, they were met with a large gathering of people, and Bleak informed them that the demon attacking humans had been spotted near Maple City and could arrive there at any moment, shocking both Salvo's and Daniel. And that concludes the video. What adventures await Salvos next? We will find out in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Bye.